Well, good evening. Well, Pastor did send his love. He misses us, and he'll, he'll be back Sunday. But uh, we're grateful to have Brother Maskey. So, Brother, why don't you come on ahead? All right, let's take our Bibles. Turn to 1 Peter chapter 4. If you would, please. 1 Peter chapter 4. I need you all to pray for me tonight as I preach. I'm not used to preaching to so many white people. <laughs> Brother Quentin, you're going to have to help me out here, okay, man? <laughs> I'm used to preaching to a church full of Nigerians, amen? So uh, <clears throat> we'll, we'll pretend you all are from Nigeria, amen? 1 Peter chapter 4, let's all stand together. <clears throat> And we'll, I'll read verses 1 and 2, 1 Peter chapter 4, and verse 1 says, For as much then as Christ hath suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves, arm yourselves. See, Brother Maskey, does that mean that every Christian ought to carry a gun? It says it right there, arm yourself, amen? It's in the book, right? Well, I don't, I don't think it's talking about guns, Amen. <laughs> Uh, it's talking about the mind of Christ, amen? You see, we live in a world, uh, if you're a Christian today, where you, you're facing a spiritual battle every day, amen? And you need the mind of Christ. And the Bible says we need to arm ourselves with the mind of Christ. It says, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind, for he that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin. Then verse 2 says that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men but to the will of God. I'd like for us to read verse 2 again, all together, if we would, please. And then uh, we'll kind of change the pronouns from he and I to his and, uh, from his and my to uh, I and, and my. So let, let's read it again. Verse 2, it says that I no longer should live the rest of my time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. You see, the Bible says here that we have two choices. Number one, you can live the rest of your time in the flesh to the lusts of men. You can just you know, live your life any way you want to live it. Just do what you want to do. Just live the dream, your dream, and uh, live your life you know, how you see fit. That's what that means there, in the flesh to the lusts of men. Or number two, you can live the rest of your time in, to the will of God. So the question we have to answer this evening is, how are we going to live the rest of our time? And that's what I want to preach about tonight. How are you going to live the rest of your time? Let's have a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we need your help now. I pray, Lord, that you'll meet with us tonight. I pray our hearts will be open and receptive. Lord, we thank you for this church. We thank you for Brother Slaybaugh and pray that you'll be with him right now, bring him back again to us uh, safely this week. And Father, I pray that uh, you continue to bless the church and as they reach others for Christ here and, and throughout the world. And Father, I just pray you will use me to be helping a blessing tonight. And Father, I pray that our, you would speak to our hearts. I pray that all of us would understand your will for our life and do it so that you would bless us and continue to uh, be honored and glorified through our life. And Father, I pray now you'll bless the service tonight. May Many decisions be made for Christ, for your honor and glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You can be seated. How are you going to live the rest of your time? When I was about nine years old, my mother started making uh, my brothers and I ride the bus to church every Sunday to the Mansfield Baptist Temple in Mansfield, Ohio, not you know, about an hour and a half from here. And uh, she made us go, amen. And by the way, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Uh, I, pray, I thank God that she made us go to church every Sunday. And I uh, thank God for her. that She's in heaven right now, but I thank God for a, a godly mother who was saved and who made uh, us go to church, amen. And we went on the bus. We were, uh, I remember the first Sunday we started going to the Baptist church there, Mansfield Baptist Temple. I began to hear a clear presentation of the gospel for the first time in my life and began to understand it. And uh, when the invitation was given, uh, they invited people to come out and receive Christ as their Savior. My older brother got up, got out of his seat, walked down the aisle, 
knelt at the altar and got saved and came back. And I said, what are you doing? What did you do? What you, what happened there? He said, well, I got saved today. And you ought to get saved. Okay, next Sunday I'll do that. All right? So next Sunday came. You know, they preached. They gave the invitation. The invitation time came. Okay, I'm going to go get saved. But something happened. My feet wouldn't move. My body wouldn't move. I would just froze, froze up right there. Ever been there before? Yeah. I knew I needed to get saved, but I was too afraid. I was too afraid what people will think, they'll look at me, and I was just too shy and afraid to go. And so this went on for several weeks and months. I wanted to get saved. The invitation, I knew I needed to get saved. I knew that if I died, I was a sinner. I'd die and go to hell. I needed to get saved and trust Christ as my Savior. But I, and I knew I had to do that. But every time the invitation time came, I just froze up. Couldn't go. Couldn't move. I wanted to go, but I couldn't. I was, I was too afraid what... And, and what people would say. And finally, uh, I remember one night there was a terrible storm. We had a terrible one of those summer storms came up, and uh, there was tornado warnings and watches out, and, and the wind was blowing, shaking the house, and I thought, you know, we're all going to die, and a tornado is going to come, we're all going to die, but wait a minute, that, if that happens, where am I going to go? I'm going to go in hell. And that made me even more scared. And uh, so it wasn't very long after that. They were giving an invitation. It was during a little crusade for Children's Crusade. It was on a Thursday night, 7th of October, 1970. I finally got enough courage to come out of my seat, walk down the aisle, knelt at the altar, and receive Christ as my Savior that day. And I was only 10 years old, just 10-year-old bus kid. Uh, but I remember that great burden lifted from my shoulder. And the peace of God came into my heart as a 10-year-old boy. And God saved me that night, and God has kept me saved ever since. Amen. And I praise the Lord for that. And uh, I continued riding the bus up until I was a teenager. And uh, uh, while I was a teenager, once again, God began to speak to my heart. That still, small voice once again began to speak to my heart, and that voice was saying, you need to give your life to me. Uh, what are you going to do with the rest of your time? Uh, you need to live the rest of your time doing the will of God. And I knew I needed to surrender to the will of God. And for a while, once again, I began to struggle with that. And uh, you see, my flesh didn't want to do that. Uh, the flesh said, no, you don't want to do the will of God. You won't like it. You won't have any fun. You won't get to do what you want to do. So you don't want to do that. You don't want to do the will of God for your life. And so it seemed like every week the flesh would win out. I knew, but every week that still small voice would say, you need to surrender to the will of God. You need to surrender to the will of God. Uh, but the flesh said, no, 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 you don't want to do that. And uh, but so for months and even years, I struggled with that. Graduated from high school, got a good job, making good money. Uh, I was still faithful to church, still went there every Sunday, uh, sang in the choir, even I sang in the choir, uh, even went visitation once in a while. I uh, never led anybody to Christ, really, but uh, I was kind of the silent partner every time. But, uh, but uh, you know, uh, there was no victory. There was no joy. There was no peace. Why? Because I knew that I was holding back from the will of God. And uh, finally... Uh, God took away that job, and I was unemployed, and once again, that still small voice. Are you ready now to do the will of God? And finally, in the summer of 1983, walked down the aisle again, knelt at the altar, and surrendered to the will of God for my life. And uh, that fall, enrolled in Bible college, went to Howells Anderson College, and while I was there, surrendered to the ministry, surrendered to preach, surrendered to the mission field, and that's where I went, met my beautiful wife. Well, actually, I met her at our home church. We were her dad was one of the bus drivers, that's another story anyway, that took me to church. And, uh, but uh, uh, we started thinking seriously about each other while we were in Bible college, and then got married in 1988, uh, and uh, then just celebrated our 29th wedding anniversary. Amen. 29 wonderful as I thank God for her, and God gave us five wonderful children, and you pray for them. Amen. But uh, we surrendered to go to, off to the mission field of Nigeria, God, it was God's will. God opened the door for us to go there. Uh, and uh, I can stand here tonight, Brother Reed, and, uh, and testify that for the last 34 years, uh, there is nothing that is more wonderful. There is nothing that is more exciting and fun. There is nothing more satisfying and rewarding than doing the will of God for your life. Amen. Don't listen to the lie of the devil that says, oh, if you give your life to the will of God, you won't, you won't have any fun. You know, the fun's over with. Uh, you won't get to do it. And, and you'll suffer. Through. No, don't listen to that lie. Amen. Uh, the will of God is the best place you can be. Amen. For your life. Uh, you see, the Bible says you've got two choices here. Okay. You can live the rest. Think about your life right now. You can live the rest of your time. Number one, you can live it in the flesh to the lust of men. 
or you can live the rest of your time to the will of God. So you've got to make a choice tonight. Now, how important is doing the will of God? Well, let's look at some Bible verses. Let's look at other verses. Let's turn to 1 John chapter 2, if you would. Uh, 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. You ought to know this verse. Uh, 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Now, he's not talking about the people of the world here, okay? He's talking about the world system, the world lifestyle. What is that? Well, verse 16 explains. It says, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Now, look at verse 17. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But listen, he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Amen? You see how important it is to do the will of God? The Bible says, doing the will of God, by doing the will of God, you will what? You will abide forever. Now, if you live your life, you know, like the rest of the world is doing, you know, uh, the lust of the flesh, just doing what you want to do like the rest of the world is doing, uh, that's all going to pass away. You're going to come one day to the end of your life, and you're going to have nothing when you stand before God. You're going to have a big fat zero. But the Bible says, he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Amen? That's how important doing the will of God is. And uh, so, uh, the Bible says, he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Now, let me ask you tonight, do you understand what the will of the Lord is for your life? You know, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 17, be not unwise but understanding what the will of the Lord is. The Bible says it is unwise for you not to understand what the will of the Lord is. It is foolish not to know the will of God and understand it and do the will of God. It's foolish. It's unwise. So uh, it is important to understand the will of God and not only understand it, but to do it. Amen? It's vitally important. And uh, so, by the way, there's only one book where we can learn about the will of God. Amen? It's right here. We're holding it in our hands. Amen? So we're going to look at some verses tonight very quickly, in a few minutes we have left here. Look at some verses that help us to understand what the will of the Lord is. Amen? You, you understand? If you want to know what the will of the Lord is, you want to understand it, okay, the Bible has, uh, it tells you exactly what the will of the Lord is. Amen? Let's start with John chapter 6, verse 40. Gospel of John chapter 6, verse 40. We'll begin there. By the way, this is where the will of God begins. This verse right here. John chapter 6, verse 40, and it says, And this is the will of him that sent me. So he's, Jesus is telling us what the will of the Lord is right here. This is the will of God, the, the one who sent me, that everyone, are you listening, that seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up again at the last day. That's where the will of God begins. You see, the first thing we need to understand about the will of God is that God wants you to look to Jesus Christ and see him on the cross as he's paying for your sins, as God's laying on him the iniquity of us all, and you look to him and you believe in him and receive him as your only way of salvation. Amen? And the Bible says you will have everlasting life and you will raise again one day. Amen? Just like Jesus was died and buried and rose again, he says, that's going to happen to you one day, amen? Uh, you're going to rise again from the dead. You'll have everlasting life. Now, let me ask you tonight. You remember the day that that happened to you, that you looked to Jesus Christ? I mean, you were not looking to anything. You were not looking to the church. You were not looking to the uh, Mary. You were not looking to the, the, the priest. You were not looking to yourself and what the good things you did. But you looked to Jesus Christ as he was dying for your sins, and he was paying for your sins. And he paid for them, and you called out to him and received him as your Savior. Amen? For me, that was the 7th of October, 1970, as a 10-year-old bus, bus kid from Mansfield, Ohio. Amen? I can remember that day. Can you remember the day that happened to you? Now, you may not remember the exact date like I can, uh, but there ought to be a time and a place you remember. Amen? That the Jesus Christ saved you. He came into your life, and you became born again. Your name was written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen? Can you remember that day? If you can't, why not make today that day? Amen? Why not just settle it today? Why not just nail it down today? Amen? Uh, just, just like there was a day you were born into this world. You know, you, can, you know your birthday, right? Well, Jesus said you must be born again. 
you got to have two birthdays, amen? You know your first birthday, when's your second birthday, amen? You better know that, amen? You better settle, it's God, that's the will of God right there. That you know you're saved, that you look to Jesus Christ. That's where the will of God begins for everyone, amen? Then, what else does the Bible say about the will of God? Okay, let's turn to Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Verses 1 and 2, again, this should be some familiar verses to all of us. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 says, I beseech ye therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect, here it is, will of God. Amen? So you see, the next thing we need to understand about the will of God is that after we are saved, we need to offer our bodies, we need to give our life as a living sacrifice unto God. Amen? God says it's just reasonable that you do that. Are you listening tonight? It is your reasonable service. Not to be conformed to the world, not to be like the world, not to be like everybody else, but to be transformed, but to be changed, to be different from the world. Amen? A great change takes place in your life. Amen? And, and you begin to serve the Lord, and you begin to live for Him and follow Him, and you begin to uh, reach people for Christ. Amen? That's what it's all about. That's what serving the Lord is all about, reaching others for Christ. That's the Great Commission. Amen? Amen? That's what it's all about. That's what we ought to be, every Christian ought to be involved in. And, and we ought to give our life is our reasonable service that we just offer our bodies a living sacrifice to serve him, reach people for Christ. Have you done that? Now, for me, that was the summer of 1983. I walked out of that aisle. After struggling with it for, for years, I said, okay, God, I'm tired of struggling with this. I'm tired of doing it my way. I'm going to do it your way now. Amen. Here's my life. I surrender my life to your will, to do your will. Now, I didn't know at that time God would send me to Nigeria because, you know, I said, well, the la okay, God, I'll, I'll surrender to full-time credit, but the last thing I want to be is a missionary. I don't want to be a missionary. But God, guess what God called me to do? Be a missionary. Okay, God, I'll be a missionary, but I don't want to go to Africa. That's the last place I want. Uh, you know, someplace close like Mexico, yeah, that's fine. That's good. I'm not, you know, criticizing people to go to Mexico. They've got to be some missionaries there, amen? But that wasn't God's will for me, amen? It was God's will for me to go to Fort Harcourt, Nigeria, West Africa, amen? And by the way, if you would ask me today, if you can have, be in anywhere in the whole world, you, want, you can have your choice. If you want to be anywhere, you know what I'd say? I'd rather be right there in Fort Harcourt, Nigeria, amen? Because that is the will of God for my life, amen? I, w I would not rather be anywhere else, amen, than right there, being in the center of God's will. And uh, so, uh, uh, the, the will of God is when you realize uh, that you are not your own, you have been bought with a price, and uh, it is the will of God that you glorify Him in your body and in your spirits, which are God's. Amen? And you realize that, and you give your body as a living sacrifice to Him, and serve Him. Amen? And that's a decision we all need to make in our Christian life, after we're saved. Now, uh, when have you made that decision? I hope many of you will make that decision tonight, amen? Like I did uh, in the summer of 1983. But the Bible also says some other things about the will of God very quickly. We'll uh, look at some other verses. Look at uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3. Look at verse 3. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3 says, For this is the will of God. It's telling you what the will of God is, amen? Pastor, I, don't, I just don't know the will of God. Okay, it's telling you what the will of God is, okay? Number one, get saved. Look to Jesus Christ. Get saved. Number two, offer your body a living, serve the Lord. Surrender to His will. Amen? Offer, that's the will of God. If you haven't done that, then that's the will of God. You, you need to do that. Amen? What else? And this is the will of God, even your sanctification. Now, that's a big word. What does it mean? That ye should abstain from fornication. Now, look down to verse 7. For God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. Now, that word holiness and sanctification are the same word, okay, in the Greek, all right? What does it mean? Well, sanctification, it means to be set apart unto God. 
to be set apart from the world and to be set apart unto God. Amen? To be separated to God. And uh, uh, God has not called us unto uncleanness, to abstain from fornication. Immorality. Now, uh, the next thing the Bible says we need to understand about the will of God is that it is God's will for us as born-again Christians to be clean vessels. Amen? It is God's will for us to live a godly, separated, clean life. That's the will of God. And by the way, it's getting more and more difficult to do that in these, because we live in a very unclean world. We live in a very wicked world. I mean, uh, all of us, we're surrounded by it. I mean, pornography is, is right at our fingertips, and, and uh, uh, wickedness is all around us. But God has not called us to uncleanness. Even though this world is a dark, wicked world, uh, God has called us to be a beacon of light shining brightly in this world of darkness. Amen? And we need to be clean vessels. We need to be pure and clean. And uh, uh, we need to, uh, to guard our thoughts. And uh, we need to be careful about what we allow our eyes to see. The Bible says, uh, 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 I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. Amen? People ought to be able to look at us and say, that person is different. He's not like everybody else. We ought to shine brightly in this world of darkness and not be like everybody else. Well, Pastor, everybody else is doing it. No, not everybody else is doing it. That's a lie of the devil, amen? God has called us to, to holiness. It's the will of the, this is the will of God, even your sanctification, amen? We need to guard our thoughts. The Bible says we need to cast down imaginations. And every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bring, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. That's 2 Thess- Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. Amen? And uh, we need to be very careful about this. And it's, again, uh, the, the devil is using this today to uh, uh, d- destroy our testimony. And everyone, everybody else around us falls. Uh, it's the will of God that we stand uh, uh, firm and live a pure, pure and clean life. And he has not called us to uncleanness but unto holiness. That's the will of God. Let's look at some other verses. Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Same 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Look at verse 18. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 18 says, In everything give thanks. Amen? For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Amen? The Bible tells us very plainly what the will of the Lord is, how we ought to live our life. Amen? As Christians. You know, it's easy for us to complain, isn't it? God says we need to give thanks for everything. Have you given God thanks today? Have you spent some time thanking God for your life, for your health? Uh, that God is, that you're born in America? You could have been born in Nigeria. You could have been born in one of these uh, Muslim countries. You ought to thank God every day. The Bible says in everything, give thanks. But we like to complain, don't we? You know, it's too cold or too hot. Uh, it, it's you know we're, we always like we always can, we can all, it's easy to complain it's not it's not easy to give thanks for everything amen but God you know uh, the children of Israel God brought them out of Egypt they were slaves in Egypt they were suffering in Egypt and God delivered them with a mighty hand out of Egypt amen now they're they're a nation for God and they're marching towards the promised land and what were they doing complaining. Oh, I wish we could go back to Egypt. Oh, the, I wish the food back there. Oh, the food. Uh, uh, they were slaves there. And all they, do, all they could do was complain. God finally got fed up with it and sent poisonous snakes. <laughs> that's how God hates complaining and murmuring. And that's why he says here, in everything we need to give thanks. Amen? Every day we ought to. And by the way, that will really change your attitude. Amen? If you just spend some time thanking God instead of, you know, <laughs> Uh, thinking about, you know, uh, all the things you don't have, you know, and complain. Uh, God hates that. And that will make a difference in your life, amen? That's the will of God right there for your life. In Christ Jesus concerning you, amen? So what about you? Are you going to live the rest of your time in the will of the flesh, to the lusts of men, living your life any way you want to live it, or are you going to live the rest of your time in the will of God? By the way, uh, don't, if you're in the will of God, don't, don't leave the will of God. Don't, there are serious consequences if you leave the will of God. Amen? Do you understand the will of God? 
If, you're, if you don't, you need to understand it and do the will of God because the Bible says, He that doeth the will of God abideth forever. There's great reward for doing the will of God. Amen? But there's also serious consequences for not being in the will of God. I can remember uh, the story of Ruth. You know, the, remember the story of Ruth? And uh, the story of Ruth is a wonderful love story in the Bible. Amen? It has a very happy ending, but it doesn't have a happy beginning. You know the... Uh, Naomi, and uh, uh, the story of Naomi and her husband Elimelech, they were living in, well, let's go to, if you would, just very quickly, the Ruth, the book of Ruth, chapter 1. They're in Bethlehem of Judea. Bethlehem means the house of bread, amen? Judah means praise of God. I, this, is, this is the will of God for them, amen? This is the house of bread, and uh, uh, it's, where, it's uh, where God wants them to be. But the Bible says there was a famine in the land. You know, sometimes in the will of God, there's going to be famines. Sometimes in the will of God, it's not easy. Amen? Are you still with me? It's not easy sometimes in the will of God. Sometimes you might have to suffer a little bit in the will of God. And the famines come and the storms come. Uh, but listen, God is God's right there, I mean, to help you get through that. Amen? And God uses those trials and God uses those storms and those famines to strengthen us and and to make us better Christians, amen? Uh, don't leave the will of God because of famines and storms, amen? But Naomi and Lebanon left the will of God. They left Bethlehem of Judea and went to Moab, which is a picture of the world. I mean, they were a cursed people. And they left the house of bread, and they went down to Moab, which is a, the world, and uh, they said, well, we're just going to sojourn there. The word sojourn there, if you read it, means just a temporary. We're just going to go for a little while, you know, just a little while. We'll come back. They end up spending 10 years down there. That's what happens when you leave. You, you always stay longer than you plan to stay out of the will of God. You always go farther than you want to go. It always costs you more than you want to pay when you leave the will of God. And that's what happens to they know me. In fact, when I, while they were down there, Elimelech died. Their two sons died. Naomi is left there alone with her two daughter-in-laws. And the one daughter-in-law left, <laughs> then only Ruth came back with Naomi. So she finally comes back after 10 years. Look down at verse 20. And uh, she said unto them, Call me not Naomi, call me Mara, which means bitter. For the Almighty hath dealt very bitterly with me. Why? They left the will of God, that's why. That's what happens when you leave the will of God. You go away. The, the word Naomi, her, her name, Naomi, means pleasant. She said, Don't call me that anymore. Call me Mara. Call me bitter. That's what happens when you leave the will. You go, you go out pleasant, you come back bitter every time. Look at verse 21. I went out full, and the Lord hath brought me home again empty. You see what happens when you leave the will of God? You go out full, you come back empty. You leave pleasant, you come back bitter. Don't leave the will of God. Number one, make sure you understand the will of God. The Bible tells you what the will of God is. Make sure you're saved. Make sure you've, you've presented your body, surrender to his will, to serve him, live for him. Amen? Do the, work, do the work of God and live for him and serve him. Be a living sacrifice. Amen? Jesus gave his life as a sacrifice for us so he might save us. Uh, and it's just reasonable that we give our life as to be a living sacrifice, living for him, reaching other people for Christ, amen, doing his work. And then it's the will of God that we live a clean life. It's the will of God that we give thanks every day. And there's other things we can we don't have time, but don't leave the will of God. See, the Bible says you've got two choices. You can live the rest of your... How are you going to live the rest of your time? Now, wouldn't it be great if we could just... See uh, uh, how much time we have left. You can see exactly how many minutes and hours and days and months and years. How, exactly how much time we got left. Wouldn't that be great? Oh, I've got uh, 23 years and five months. So, okay, I can live you know, 10 years the way I want to live, and I'll live the rest, live the rest of time for God. Uh, wouldn't it be great if we could do that? But we can't do that, can we? No, the Bible says, boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. The Bible says, what is your life? Is even a vapor. Amen? What's your life? It's a vapor. 
Just, it's, it's here one second, gone. The next second. That's how it is compared to eternity. Amen? It's a vapor. What are you going to do with your vapor? It's here for a little time and then vanisheth away, the Bible says. We don't, we don't know how much time we have left. And God says, you need to live the rest of your time to the will of God. You can live it to the will of the flesh. You can just you know, keep living it the way you want to live and just do what you want to do like the rest of the world is. But the world passeth away and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abides forever. Amen? So you've got, you got a choice to make tonight. I hope you make the right choice. Let's bow our heads, close our eyes. Our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed. We're going to give just a short invitation tonight. I, I guess the, hymn, the piano player is going to come. And you don't, if God spoke to your heart tonight and you need to do some business with God tonight about the will of God for your life, would you come down just like I did uh, that summer of 1983, just say, God, whatever the will of God is for your life, I'm, I'm willing to do it. I want you to have control of my life. Would you make that decision tonight as the invitation begins, as the piano comes, would you come? Let's all stand together, everyone standing, with our heads bowed and our eyes closed. If God spoke to you tonight, would you come and let God have his way in your life tonight? You come. Don't, you don't even have to wait for someone else to come. Just let God have his way. What about the will of God tonight? How are you going to live the rest of your time? Okay, you got two choices. What about the will of God? Lest we think the will of God is some pie-in-the-sky, unattainable, mystical thing. Pretty clear, isn't it? Uh, I know that's a, one of those questions, those age-old questions. What's God's will for my life? It's uh, pretty clear. It's good. It's good, brother. Thank you. Um, we will have our song of dismissal here very shortly, but uh, Rob Beach... Do I understand it's your birthday today? Well, we can't have your birthday be today without singing the happy birthday. Let's sing happy birthday to Rob Beach. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Amen. Happy birthday, brother. It's good to have you here on a Wednesday night on your birthday. Amen. Very good. Well, let's sing the windows of heaven are open. The blessings are falling tonight. Maskage, if you go back to your uh, display there, and we'll be dismissed as soon as we sing. The windows of heaven are open. The blessings are falling tonight. There's joy, joy, joy in my heart since Jesus made everything right. I gave him my old tattered garment. He made me a robe of pure white. I'm feasting on manna from heaven. And that's why I'm happy. That's why you're happy. That's why we're happy tonight. Amen. You are dismissed. Choir will practice in just a couple minutes.